G'day and welcome. We are back with Mario. I hope you punched a Bundy, because I sure have. Now, before we get into it, I'll just take a sip from my hydration fluid. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, let's move on. Let's go to Winnie the Pooh. Because, one, grew up with it. And that's all I need to say. Why don't we pick Winnie the Pooh? I'm sure I won't get copyright for this. Hey, my favourite. It's the best book. Is that your voice? You need to remember. Sure, for kids. Manta, trust me. You're at least scratching the surface. Every character in the book represents a mental disorder. Yes, there's a conspiracy theory, I guess you could call it, going about. That that's the case. I didn't expect anything less of you. Can't you see the gap? The gap in what they usually say about this book. Actually, it's a story about a boy who's very, very lonely. So lonely that his friends are all imaginary. Although it's okay to imagine things as a child, this is a special case. All characters are manifested depending on Christopher Robin's mood, schizophrenia. Rabbit and Winnie the Pooh, both are likely to have obsessive compulsive disorder. Eeyore. His bleak outlook on life could be indicative of depressive disorder. Piglet's constant state of worry could mean generalized anxiety disorder. And Tigger might have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Would now be a bad time to say that I've got all of that. Don't worry. I take medicine. I enjoy books with hidden messages. Maybe that's why I enjoyed winning food. I could relate. Nana, I think you're complicating things here. I'm amused how you turn the story about friendship into a dark and gloomy tale. But it does fit, doesn't it? You'll get it when you grow up. I wonder which character you mostly identify with, Nana. Nana is our Tigger. Who are you calling a Tigger? And look who's talking, Miss Rabbit. Okay, what about Seema? Hmm, <sighs> Piglet. The only, the only piglet here is you, Nana. Maybe I'm too boring to properly represent the character after all. And who's our Christopher Robin? Marta, it's inappropriate to joke about schizophrenia. You know, I once heard that every fourth person has it. So lucky it's not me. Me neither. Same here. They're staring into my soul again. Okay class, let's take it easy shall we?
Oh yeah, it's not hard to find that white time of schizophrenia. But you never know when you'll get these things. It could be at any moment. Just after you decide what to see in Winnie the Pooh. Cut the animals or mental illness. Or cut the animals with mental illness. By the way, Nana, you didn't say anything about the author, Alan Mill. Time often keeps the masterpiece but omits the name of its author. Okay, class. If you have any questions, now it's the time. What is your favorite book? No, what is your favorite book? My favorite book, you say? It's The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I think that's French. Hey, you've forgotten about me. Let me tell you about my favorite book. It's so said Zarathustra by Nietzsche. Wait to go. You may just spell the name wrong. Also, what's so smart about it? Actually, it's considered to be one of the deepest books in the universe. I'll have you know that we don't just live in one universe but we're connected to many universes, creating a multiverse. That's the theory I'm going with right now. And those multiverses are actually linked to other dimensions, which create even more multiverses, with other alternatives to the reality we live in currently. By whom, I wonder? The internet. See, this book says that animals, nature, everything is connected in this world. To evolve, we must think about complicated things at all. Ermi, you got it all wrong. Then tell me what it's about. We should become the Uber mate to have some fun. Ha, huh, that's pretty close. I can't do an umlaut in a female voice. Shortly after class ends, Taya leaves the class and stands near the door. Okay. Thanks for the lesson. It was intriguing. And the mere fact that they actually covered mental illness a bit. It's rather unusual. You don't see that much. Oh, Matt. You're welcome. Glad to see you liked it. And do you like to teach us here? Well, it's a 1 to 5 ratio, so it's not like the workload's too heavy. You're special, in a good sense of this word. Good to know. Wait a minute. I'm... Special? It's important for me that you guys have your own opinion. Where did you work before? Oh my, too many places to remember. Is it new for you to teach almost all subjects at once? Yeah, they say it's an experiment, you know. However, it's true that I know a lot of subjects quite well. I take it you've worked as a teacher for a long time. Look at him. Are you going to ask me how old I am next? Since you brought it up. No, of course not. However, I don't even know your home country. 
How come? Oh, you. That means you haven't even read my profile in the booklet. I actually lost it somewhere. I'm from Europe, but that's all about all I'm going to uncover. Women are mysterious, you see. What do you reckon? I have to run. See you. No running in the halls. You'll set a bad example for the other students. We have after school activities and I'm on my way to the club room. Members are Nana, Seema, Marta, and I. Who's I? I'd like to know who I is. We can't take anyone from other classes because they'd harm the experience. We were about to get going when Ermi approached us. Ladies, you looking good tonight? Thanks, Amy. Is there anything you want to ask? Why don't you let me in? I promise to be... I promise to be a good member. Amy, we just talk about silly things there. Silly things. We're going to discuss food today. I happen to be an expert on this subject. Sure. Just kidding. I know you'll never let me in. Matt, can I have your attention for a moment? You already have it. Look, I need your help. Keep between us, alright? Recently I've been making a computer game. I made a demo version, so I need someone to play it. Feedback is key to improvement. Alright, you can count on me. Hopefully. He gives me a flash drive and leaves. It feels comfy in our club room. This place is pretty old, so I bet it's witnessed a lot. I wonder what happens to members of all the clubs from before. I wouldn't know, and they've been part of the club, and there's an airship floating by, just casually floating by. Now exiting stage left. Okay, that was interesting. Where are all these people now? Are they happy? These questions fly around in my head. Relentlessly, and it's a little stuffed cat up there. I think it's a stuffed cat. I hereby declare an agenda for today's meeting. All members are to discuss food. The ever important topic, that's for sure. Is this a legitimate club activity? Just discussing random stuff. I would understand if we made time machines or played light music. I believe we have clubs like that already, Martha. Honestly, I enjoy the opportunity to unwind and just talk. We'll get disbanded. I think I keep breaking character for that one. Well, we have four members. A legitimate minimum. I think Mart is more afraid about our seemingly unclear purpose as a club. 
Worry not. I submit an official report after every club meeting. Really? How do you make it look meaningful on paper? Today, easy. Today it's not about food, it's about acceptance. Acceptance? A social movement seeking to change bias and social attitudes. See, the latest thinking is that you should accept your body. Yes, I accept the fact that I am particularly short, especially for a male. And I'll have you know, I'm five foot one. That's really short because the average height for a male in Australia is five foot ten. And the average height for a female in Australia is five foot four and a half. Meaning, among other things, that you can eat everything with little moderation. Even human flesh. Okay, we'll just leave that out of this conversation for now. People might get worried. Count me in as an activist. An activist in the consumption of human flesh? Still, how does that relate to our meeting? I don't like to make things up. No one's making up anything. Why don't we talk about our guilty pleasures today? Oh, and we can eat something tasty after all. The word guilty is no more. Eat tasty things? As much as I want. Is this really life? Wait, but won't we get fat now? Don't worry, I've got it. My polar thyroid, and it seems that I don't have to worry too much about what I eat. I need to actually gain weight. That's the punchline. They say it's totally okay nowadays. They're looking, but the boys always look at slim girls. They're staring again. Matt, do you like slim girls? This requires a particular intense level of thought. I'd say as long as they're not anorexic and they've got a bit of muscle to them, then it should be fine. But I've got to be honest, I prefer healthy, so I guess slimmer. I don't know exactly what they mean by that, so I'm just going to go with yes I do. Uh, yes I do. What did you say? See? Let's get started. I like potato chips. Oh, it's a calorie bomb. Are you hating on me? Just a slip of the tongue. That's me. It's probably pizza. live without sweet things. You're staring again. So, that's it for the discussion. We need to find common ground. What about soft drinks? It's not food. What about cakes then? Winning by unanimous decision. 
Hey, let's make a perfect cake. We don't have any ingredients. And now it has to be a Fortnite friendly cake. Let's go buy some. We have our budget. I already know what the perfect cake looks like and tastes like. So do I. I know that as well. Looks like we're going to have a heated discussion. Hmm. Not if you're the one who makes the cake, Matt. Don't ask me to cook anything. Because I'm not very good at it. And I don't like all the rushing around. Great idea. If anything, you're the one to blame. Me? What do I do? You can't pin this on me, Nana. But I can't read your minds. What am I, psychic? Well, that means... Then it means you have to test your luck. Alright, last question. How am I supposed to get the ingredients? And even if I manage to do it, we have no kitchen or anything like this here. Oh dear. Why do you ruin our dream, Matt? Because I'm a rationalist. That's what I do. A dream, you say? Let's try closing our eyes again. But this time, we won't be meditating. Now, we'll use the power of visualization. If we visualize the cake, it'll get attracted to us. You saying a cake's gonna hit on you? Behold, Matt. Okay, and with that, I think that's a good spot to leave it, because we can make a cake next episode. If you enjoyed that episode, be sure to leave a like. If you enjoy what I do, why not subscribe, and make sure you kick a billy. And as I've said before, not that billy, it has a different meaning. Now with all that out of the way, there's only one more thing to say. Cheers!